What is up viewers, Mythifud here, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up a static IP address for your PS4. So on my last video on how to set up a static IP address for the PS3, I did a poor job of explaining what a static IP address does. It does not technically make your internet faster, but it allows us to open up ports to that designated IP address, which will be our PS4 in this case. So when you open up the ports to your PS4, it allows more packets of data to flow to your PS4, and with more packets of data flowing to your PS4, you're going to have a better connection, and that's what I mean by a faster internet connection. So it technically does not get faster, but it does get a lot better connection to your game that you're going to be playing. So you're not going to be lagging and lagging out and whatnot. So in my case, in my eyes, it's faster internet. Well, technically it's not faster internet, but it's faster, if that makes sense. So now that we've quickly gone over what a static IP address does, let's start creating a static IP address for our PS4. So the first step in creating a static IP address for our PS4s is getting on a Windows computer. I really don't know how the steps work for a Macintosh, so I'm not going to be showing that in this video. But for Windows computers, since the majority of people are using Windows, this is how you do it. You're going to go to the bottom left corner of your computer and click the Start menu. And after you click the Start menu, you want to search Programs and Files and search CMD. That will bring up your command prompt. So after your command prompt opens, you're going to want to type IP config slash all and then click enter and then you'll see a bunch of things kind of pop up real quick you're going to want to scroll up towards the top ish area and you're going to look for an area that says either something about wireless local area connection or ethernet local area connection ethernet means your computer is wired to the internet and the wireless means you're on the wi-fi router whatever they're the exact same thing just one's wired and one's wireless so once you find that area we're going to look for a few things, and you can either take a picture of this on your smartphone, take a screenshot on your computer, or just write them down, whatever. But we're going to need a few things. The first thing we're going to need is our default gateway. You're going to want to write that down. And then the next thing you're going to want to write down is, uh, let's see, the subnet mask. It's probably just the 255.255.255.0. And then the last thing you're going to need is the DNS servers. You can have one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. If you have two... You're going to want to write down the first two. If you only have one, just write down the first one. And just remember, all your guys' stuff is going to be different than mine. It might be the same, but for the, most likely it's going to be different. So don't put my information in when we do this stuff. You want to get your own information because it's not going to work if you enter my information in. So after we get those few things, we can go on to the next step. Our next step is getting on our PS4 and then creating a static IP address so we can open up the ports to our device. So before we get into this, I just want to apologize for not being able to record the screen. Sony has not pushed out the update that allows us to record the screen through the HDMI port, so I only have screenshots for the time being. As you guys can see though, I'm on the start screen of our PS4, and the first thing you want to do is find your settings, which is on the top bar, which looks like the toolbox, and choose that. So once you select settings, you want to scroll down and find the network option, and then choose that. So once you find and select network from the settings area, you're going to want to scroll down one thing and choose set up internet connection. So after you choose set up internet connection, you have two options. One that says use Wi-Fi and the other one says use a LAN cable. The Wi-Fi is just wirelessly through your router and a LAN cable is an actual ethernet cable going from either your modem or your router straight to your PS4. So Wi-Fi is wireless and LAN cable is wired internet. And I'm going to choose LAN cable since mine is connected to the, uh, through Ethernet cable. And just to let you guys know, the steps after this is the exact same for either one. So don't freak out that if you're using Wi-Fi, it's going to be different. The steps are the exact same. So don't worry. This is where the steps start getting really important. You have two options here. You have easy and custom. Easy will auto obtain IP address. And we don't want that. We want to set up a static IP address. So we're going to choose custom. So if you chose LAN cable, it's going to take you to the IP address settings. If you chose Wi-Fi, it's going to ask you which router is yours, and you're going to put your password in, and then it will take you to your IP address settings. But once you get to your IP address settings, you're going to want to choose manual. So once you choose manual, it's going to bring up five things. IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, primary DNS, and secondary DNS. The first thing on the list is IP address which is going to be our PS4's static IP. 
Every time we connect a device to our router or modem, whether it's wirelessly or wired, it needs an IP address to communicate. And our router or modem will supply or lease an IP address to our device, and it usually lasts about 24 hours. The problem with that, though, is every time our device needs a new IP address leased to it, it'll just assign a random IP address. What's cool about a static IP address, though, is once you enter an IP address, it'll ask for that exact same IP address every time, so then you can open up the ports to that specific IP address. I do want to make a note, though, that if you're going to set up a static IP address for multiple devices, make sure they're different IP addresses because if you have all the same devices with the same static IP address, they won't all be able to connect to the internet at the same time or within 24 hours. As an example below, you can see all my devices have a different stack IP address so I can use them all at the same time without one taking up a stack IP address from the other. So the first thing you need to do to create an IP address for your PS4 is take the first three numbers of your default gateway. My default gateway is 192.168.1.1. So the first three numbers I'm going to use are 192.168.1. So here's a small example. Let's say your default gateway is uh, 192.168.0.1. The first three numbers for your PS4's IP address is gonna be 192.168.0. And then the last number you get to choose yourself. I personally like to choose my stuff in the 120s, 130s, but it's up to you. If you pick the lower numbers, there's a small chance that your computer or other device in the house, whether it's a cell phone, might take that IP address. So I choose my stuff in the higher numbers. So once you've created an IP address for your PS4, the next thing you need to enter is your subnet mask, which is most likely 255.255.2550. If it's different though, enter what you have. For our default gateway, whatever we wrote down from our command prompt on our computer is your default gateway. You just write whatever it says. The last two things on the list are our DNS servers. If you only had one DNS server, you only have to enter in the primary DNS server. If you have two or more DNS servers, you only need the first two DNS servers, and the first one on the list is your primary DNS, and then the second one on your list is your secondary DNS. And you just write those or enter those in, as they say. So once you have all your information entered in those five things, you're going to want to choose next, which will take you to the MTU settings. And for the MTU settings, you want to choose automatic. After that, it's going to ask you for your proxy server. Make sure you choose do not use, and the next screen will ask you to test your internet connection. Make sure you test your internet connection to make sure everything's working. If it's able to obtain IP address, you did your stack IP address correctly, but if it's not able to connect to your internet, that's something wrong with your actual internet connection. So just to kind of throw that out there for you guys. And then also, please note that at the bottom of the screen it says connection speeds are estimates only. Do not expect the static IP address to make your internet faster. So once you've successfully created a static IP address for your PS4, we need to go back to our computer and open up the ports to our PS4. Now that we're back on our computer and successfully made a static IP address for our PS4, we need to open up the ports. So there are two ways going about this. There's DMZing and then there's port forwarding. DMZing is my personal favorite and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that first because it's easier and quicker and it will most likely work and help you out. But if that doesn't help you, I'm gonna also show you guys how to port forward, which should help you. So the first step is opening up an internet browser. Any browser will suffice and I'm gonna use Google Chrome for this example. You're also going to want to open up two tabs, one for our website we're going to use, and the other tab is going to be for our advanced router settings. So in our first tab, we're going to want to go to portforward.com, and I'm going to put the link down in the description below so you guys can just click on it and go straight to the site. So once you get to the Port Forward site, if you look to the left, you're going to see a bunch of different links, and one of the sections is games, and there's a section also called how to port forward to the PS4. We're going to choose that. Once you click that, it's going to take you to a page called Port Forwarding Guides for PS4. And then down below, you're going to see a bunch of model names for routers. And my router is an Asus, so we're going to use an Asus as my example in this video. So once you figure out the brand of your router, it's going to take you to a page full of all the different types of models to that brand. And my model is the RTN66R. You have to figure out what model yours is and click that. Once you get to that page, you're going to open up your other tab and put in your default gateway, which will open up your advanced router settings. My default gateway, for example, is 192.168.1.1. And once you click enter, it'll probably ask you for your admin and your password. So if you don't know what your username and password are, that's where this port forwarding site comes into place. If you go back to that page where we just left, it'll tell you your default username and password. 
As you can see, my default username is admin, as well as my default password is also admin. If the default username and password do not work, then you're going to have to ask whoever set up the internet what they made the username and password. I have personally made a custom username and password, so I'm going to enter that in real quick. And I'm going to blur it out so you guys cannot see what my stuff is. Obviously, I can't see what the password is, but I still don't want you guys knowing my username. So once you get logged in, it's going to take you to your advanced router settings. And do remember that depending on what brand of router you have, it's going to look different. So you might have to do a little bit of digging around to try to find some of these settings we're going to change. But I, it's pretty easy. So just dig around a little bit and you'll probably find it. You can also go back to that port forwarding site, that other tab we have. And it usually has instructions on how to kind of guide yourself around and how to open up the ports. We're not going to do a port opening yet. But we're going to do the DMZing first. So on my screen, though, I'm going to go to the WAN or the WAN, and that's going to take me to my port forwarding area and my DMZing area as we wait for it to load. Give it a few seconds. OK, so at the top, you guys can see I have a bunch of tabs. And over here, we have the port forwarding tab. And then here's the DMZ tab. And like I said, you might have to do a little bit of digging to find the DMZ area. It's sometimes under application and gaming. It just depends on what brand you have. But I'm going to choose DMZ right now. And here's the description of the DMZ. A virtual DMZ allows you to expose one computer to the internet so that all inbound packets will be redirected to the computer you're set, or in our case, our PS4. It, will be, oh, it is useful while you run some applications that are on certain incoming ports. Please use carefully. And yeah, really do use carefully. I never use DMZ for my computer. I will not use it. I only use it for my gaming consoles. And please note that you can only use one device at a time. Well, in my experience, I've only been able to use one device at a time. So what you're going to want to do is enable the DMZ and then enter in your PS4's static IP you created. In my case, it's 192.168.1.128. So once you enter your PS4 static IP address, you're going to want to click apply or whatever yours says. It might be like save, change settings or whatever. Just apply. And that's all you have to do for DMZing. It's really easy. Once you save it and it's done, you're ready to go. You can turn your PS4 on and start gaming and you'll probably have a better connection. So the DMZ should work for you, but if it doesn't work as well as you want to, you can also port forward. And I don't know how well, like how much better that will work for you, but we can try it anyways. But I'm going to click on my port forwarding tab. And this is where the port forwarding site comes into play. Assuming you did it correctly, we're going to go to the port forwarding tab. And in this little box right here, you want to enter your static IP address that you made for your PS4. And as we kind of read down, it's going to tell you where to go, how to get to your advanced router settings, which I already showed you, your default password and username, blah, 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 blah. And that's going to show you instructions on how to get to your port forwarding tab. And we, if you assuming you've already found it, you can just skip all that. But if you haven't, you can read through it. And as you go down, it will also have these boxes right here, and it'll show you what ports you need to put in. So I'm assuming that these ports are for opening the PlayStation Network. And as you can see from mine, I have a little bit extra ones. Those are for different games and whatnot. But you can also see that I have similar ports, and that's open up the PlayStation Network ports. So you just want to enter those ports in as it says on the port forwarding site. I mean, it literally gives you the instructions on how to uh, enter that stuff in. So on the port forwarding site where it says service name, you don't have to put name one, name two, you just put whatever name you want to help keep it organized. But you do want to follow the port range, whatever it says for the port range, you enter the local IP, which is your static IP for your PS4, the local port, protocol, and whatever. You just want to do exactly what it says. The only thing you do not have to do exactly what it says is the service name. You can actually create that to keep it organized. So you want to go down the list and put in all the ports. And once you're done, you go back to your router page and then click apply or save as or whatever. And once that's done, assuming you did it correctly, it's all done and your ports are open and you're ready to game. So with that, thanks for watching my video, guys. I really hope this helps you guys out with the internet connection. And if you guys need help or an explanation on it, you guys can contact me on my Facebook page, my Twitter, or even my Instagram, which are going to be linked down below in the description. And while you guys are there, make sure you guys give me a like or follow to keep up to date with my content. And also, please make sure you guys give me some time to reply because I'm very busy with school and work all the time. And again, thanks for watching and spread the word to make sure everyone has an awesome connection which makes us gamers happy. And until next time, happy gaming.